Alright, so hello and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG, I mean, Brave New World Blindfolded Game. Uh, it's been a while since I last played, I've had all sorts of stuff coming uh, around, so hopefully I haven't, uh, I I've probably lost a little bit of my uh, ability, so if I end up playing badly this segment, that's why. Anyway, uh, gonna shove the Zephyr cape on Gao. The speed, the stamina, the evasion, they're all gonna come in handy. And I've got a better candidate for the Power Glove this time, in the form of Edgar, who will be using his uh, powerful water trident on the cranes who are weak to water. So, I mean, duh, I guess. And Locke shall be taking the Reflect Ring. So basically, in theory at least, Locke should be protected from the magic by the Reflect Ring. Gao should be protected from their magic by the, uh, the by the fact that he'll be using Brawler Rage, which will be and making him vulnerable to lightning. I'm not sure why the Brawler Rage is invulnerable to lightning, but it does make him invulnerable to lightning, and he already has fire thanks to the Tiger Mask, so he should be pretty good to go, and he's even got Float to prevent the Magnitude spell from working. The other guys are just going to have to tank it. And Edgar, in theory, should be jumping over half the stuff. Setzer will probably just die, but eh, you win some, you lose some. Um, is there anything else I wanted to do? I don't think so. I think that. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I moved Gao to the back already. That's so he doesn't die, die to the dogs on the way up. I want to preserve his float status because his float status will come in handy to avoid the magnitude, like I already said. And the dogs can kill him in two hits in the front, which is uh, reasonably likely to pierce his 84 evasion. At least on, at least it's likely enough that I really don't want it to happen because they both attack twice. But I, uh, if he's in the back, I've got to hit him all four times, and that's just ridiculous. So Gao's essentially going to be siphoning all the hits from the dogs on the way up, which should make this part pretty easy. He really shouldn't be dying, and... So the chaser is definitely the most more worrisome battle on the way up, but hopefully I'll make it through those battles just fine. So let's save. And here we go for the real segment. Well, let's go then. Uh, battle right out the get-go, that's not good. Alright, so who are you? You are Gao. Brawler Rage. If I scroll all the way left, and then all the way up, I can, I'll either hit the commando if there's a commando there, or I'll hit the chaser if there's a chaser there. Uh, I don't want to jump with you. Okay, you're that kind of chaser. Well, I'll wipe your minions with Bioblaster for now. It won't keep them down, but it'll get them dead for the moment. Yikes, what? Why is everything doing stuff? All that'll really do is just reset their ATVs. But now some of them at least are dead. That doesn't do enough damage to kill all of them all the time. Huh? What menu are you in, dang it? Okay, there we go, now... There we go, now target the chaser. Okay, I think the chaser's dead. Or not. Oh, gosh. Didn't know you used Gigavolt, that's not good. Hopefully Gao didn't die. The most important thing is that Gao's not dead. The Chaser's dead now, I can revive Edgar. If I can just make it to the end of the fight. Wait. 
Okay. It's like... What's going on? Was that Gigavolt, or did it just not kill anyone, or... Yeah, I heard the rock on my side, so I must have confused my own side. Didn't see this one coming. There's a good chance Gao hit himself, because I didn't hear any rolling of that rock before it hit anything. Which means Gao probably died, which is a bummer. Dang it, Edgar, why do you have to noise blaster everybody? Lux, I'm confused, but... Okay. Gao's not dead yet, that's good. It's possible he missed himself. Did Edgar just seriously... I Maybe I'm just on the noise blaster and using it on them? I don't know. Well, they're all dead. So hopefully that didn't go too badly. I'm like two steps from the start, come on. Alright, uh, let's check if anyone needs Phoenix Downing. Yep, that's my Phoenix Down. I managed to preserve it this far at least. <laughs> It's okay, the Phoenix Down won't really help in the Cranes fight. I'm just kind of going Blitzkrieg on that anyway. Well, I made it all the way down there, but it's possible to get battles in like three steps, so it's no guarantee. Alright. Okay, this is Gao. Well, it's only to be expected that Gao would come up before Edgar, but... Bioblaster. I'm pretty sure this is a battle with the commander and the dogs. Lots of attacks went my way and got blocked, so... Feeling pretty hopeful about that. Are they all dead? That would be a much nicer outcome than the first fight. Provided Locke didn't die or something. Nope, he didn't die because he needed plenty of healing. I uh, hope I went far enough out to... Let's run back to the right while mashing A just in case I... Nope. Dang, that increases my chance to battle slightly. Have another battle at least. Probably the worst battle here is the one I, I fought at the beginning with the Chaser and the Onion Knights. I'm pretty sure this is one of the Chasers that summons the other guys. Or not. Maybe it's his commander and dogs. Well, no healing is always a good battle. Down to the bottom. Don't give me another fight, please. I already fought three, thanks. Alright, there we go. I'm in the cutscene. Now hopefully this crane should be a lot more relax crane's fight should be a lot more relaxed than uh, in the LLG. And by that I mean either the Brave New World LLG or the Blindfolded LLG. You can pick your poison on that one. At first I thought that, wow, this is actually kind of challenging, and then I was like, oh yeah, that whole golem thing, that's kind of helpful. Just a little bit. It's 
So the first order of business is to figure out who's who. I guess I'll, if it's second P, I'll scroll down one spot so that if it's slots, I won't hear any noises, and if it's magic, I'll be able to determine that to find out if it's lock or sets or... For the other two, I just need to press A and then s figure it out in that menu. No issues. Hopefully they attack different people. Or do that. That works too. That's not particularly good, but... Figured. What were the chances that it wouldn't be Gao? Brawler. Okay, this is his magic menu. Locks, anyway. Okay. This should be Golem. That'll take a while to summon, but hopefully it'll get off before they get another turn. Uh, what? Uh oh, what am I doing with Hedgar? Or was that Setzer somehow? Yeah, that was Setzer. I couldn't hear the noise properly because something went, happened at the same time. Uh oh. Got another turn because I was slow. They hit Gao, which knocked him into low. If he survives, that'll actually be quite helpful. I think Gao survived. No, that was Locke, probably. Yeah, there's a good chance Gao died, which isn't good. At least I've got Sessor's slots this time, which I didn't have in any of my test runs because he always went and died. So hopefully that'll be enough to push the envelope, even with Gao dead so quick. Gotta love that golem, although Locke might have just blocked it or something. Jump! Reach to the skies, Edgar! You can do it. Uh oh. Oh, what? Gao is alive. Yahoo! <laughs> well, okay, that kind of shoots it in, I think. I think I've got this at this point. Because Gao's got safe and uh, shell, he's a serious, ridiculous tank there. Nullifies one of their elements, halves the other. Safe and shell. Restores 40 HP every region tick. What have I done? I've created a monster! <laughs> I'm just gonna hold A. <laughs> These guys are done. Oh no, a fire spell. In, a, in my LG, that would have been instant death. How did I just use an attack with the airship when I'm standing on the airship? It doesn't work that way, guys. Simply doesn't work that way. Yeah, so much better than in the blindfolded LLG. In fact, I think that went down even easier than my test runs, because Setzer didn't get murdered in the first turn. Now I just gotta focus on getting through this part. The Esper World's kind of nasty, because the first reason is why I... because I can't menu trick. But the second reason is because, uh... There's not much indicators of anything that's going on, like, I can't hear anything. Except the music, just like be in there. The The only good thing I can say is that unlike the uh, LLG portion of this, 
I, I'm not forced into auto dash, which means I can take, and in the LLG, the auto dash prevented me from uh, taking one step very easily. It, it actually made it really challenging to take only one step at a time. I had the timing worked out for the music before, but I forgot it, so I'm just going to mash A for a while here. As you can see, my route will be kind of really strange, because it's the route I memorized for the LLG to minimize the number of times that I had to take one step at a time. This part probably won't be all that interesting, to be honest. It'll probably just be a lot of waiting for me to realize I'm outside of a cutscene. Which I probably am for this one at this point. Not having the menu trick around is so irritating. Alright, one step down, one step right. Alright, so now I should be outside of Meduin's uh, bedroom. So, run into the tree. Run to the other tree. Fence. Other fence. Gate. Bill Gates. Hello, Bill and out the gate, hopefully. There's no NPCs running around right now, but there will be later. That, that's one of those spots where I probably could have just taken like one or two steps to the right and then just walked out the gate, but I've already memorized the route for my LG, so I'm not going to do that. Alright, take one step left, all the way up. Take one step left, all the way up. Now I should be next to this corpse here, so... I said corpse in last time too. Even though it's clearly not a corpse, because she's not all that dead. Where is she? Dun dun dun? <laughs> I suspect nobody's uh, listening to me say this, so... Hello anyone who's listening to me say this. Here's someone coming down the stairs, hopefully... They're not here to talk to me. <laughs> so just mashing A. The little cave right here, the one that I'm probably already in and just putting safety on at this point, is uh, pro practically the only nice place in this area. Because <laughs> everything works out quite nicely. Alright, that should be good enough, do you think? I wasn't asking for your opinion. But now I am. I'm mostly just saying things because I'm bored, really. <laughs> this doesn't even have that weird intensity that it does in the LLG because I'm not all that worried about redoing the Crane's Battle if I have to. Alright, so I should be at the foot of the bed. Conveniently enough, I can talk to her at the foot of the bed instead of having to go all the way. So now we get another cutscene.
after this Maduin will wake up in bed, but which is slightly different from the spot where I started in his room the first time. But as long as I just hold right at the start, I get back to the exact same place, so yay repetition. And I'm practically going to the same place too. Three times I've got to worm my way up to that little uh, space up at the top, that cave where everything happens, that's where everything goes down. I probably got a woke. I've already probably woken up in bed already, but just gotta be careful, cause one thing I've noticed is that if I fail, I'm probably in Maduin's room, so I'll try to probably recover from there. But no guarantees on that. The likelihood is actually pretty small that I'll recover. Alright. So I'm gonna go for it now. Reach the wall. One step down. One step right. Believe it or not, that was the most dangerous part of the, this whole spot on the LLG. Because there's a chance that I would uh, fail to... Would accidentally take two steps both times in a row. The good old hit the tree. Hit the other tree. The analogy I used was that this is like one of those ice slidey places in Pokemon that always shows up where you gotta only go in a straight line across the ice and you can only stop at those little patches. It's kind of how it works here, or where you hit a wall. Should be at the door, but now I've gotta put safety on this too because there's NPCs all over the place. Shouldn't need that much safety there, though. But here's where they could decide to royally mess me up. I should have reached the tree by now. Run back up into the bush. Alright. Theoretically, one of the NPCs could get in my way when I try to take a step left here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try this same sequence of events four times, and theoretically, two of these times it should work. One step left, all the way up. One step left, all the way up. In all likelihood, all four t the last two times I just ran into a cliff face, but... Alright, now I take one step right again to line myself up with Yura. Hello, nothing's wrong. Alright. So here, here's the only part where I'll do a root change for my uh, LLG because... I know for a fact that it's just one step to the left there, and that makes it a whole lot simpler, it makes a whole lot more sense than the left, down, right, down, left, up, <laughs> that I would have had to do otherwise. Now hopefully the music should be fading out soon. If I could use the menu here, this whole, this whole segment would be so much easier, because I have an indicator very often each time I go into a cutscene of where I am. There we go. That part was very, very nerve-wracking in the LLG. It's it's even nerve-wracking here, but so much more so before because Ooh. 
when you go that long without having any indicator at all of, of what you're doing. Usually it looks like I should have no idea what I'm, what's going on maybe, but as one case where I really do have no idea what's going on. I could have made a mistake anywhere down there and never would have figured it out probably. So hopefully I should be uh, in the cave already. If I make a mis I can afford not to put much safety on this one because uh, if I did mess up, I'll get an indicator very quickly, and it won't make and it won't throw me off. So yeah, it's probably the case that'll be uh, treated to. Uh, Imperial troops marching any second now, like I was right on cue. Here we go. Don't have to press the button for long here. Pretty much just people going to places and... That's the end of it from there. I had the timing for this worked out before as well with the music, but it's not worked out right now, so... Alright, so let's talk to this chump, and now I have to press A for another 10 years. This is the last time though, this is the last cutscene here that I have to worry about. The next cutscene I enter I'll be essentially out of this horrible Esperville place. And from there I'm straight back on the airship where I can open my eyes, so... Alright, uh, I'll call it there. If I find I didn't make it, I'll just press the button a few more times and... Because I won't be triggering anything with the A button, so I won't end up running anywhere. I'll just stick in the same spot. One, two, three. All the way to the right. Walk into this tree. All the way to the left. I hit something over here just past the flower bushes that I can see in my head, even if I can't see it on the screen. Run up into this cliff face. That shouldn't be a very long walk. Run left. I'm glad there isn't a little notch here because it looks like there's a little spot that I should be running into, but there isn't. So I'm grateful for that anyway. One less thing to remember. Although I suppose, considering if I even remembered enough to say that, I wouldn't have forgotten. Especially when, since I would have had to remember there, and I'm just remembering here because, I don't know. All the way to the right. This is another one of those uh, weird ice patches that I'm kind of using. When I could have probably just walked a couple steps off, but I wouldn't have known for sure the exact number. straight up from here. Alright, now I just kind of go in a C shape. C. U. Later. One step left, all the way up. Music fades out as soon as I walk into the next area, so... Made it. There we go. The winds... Not sure what else I'm gonna say with that. <laughs> Let's just cut off the sentence here. But anyway, I'm out of here.
There's pretty much no chance of failing the rest of this segment. All I've got to do is mash A, fly to the airship to a suitable spot, when I, which I can see perfectly well, and uh, then save my game. My cursor's already on item, so... I'll know exactly what I'm doing. Presumably. Can't say that for sure. Any second now with the stabbing guest all, you can get it over with already. Oh wait, was I supposed to walk somewhere? I'm starting to think I was supposed to walk somewhere. Okay. Anything going on here? There we go. <laughs> There's the stabbing I was looking for. Rather listening for. You may have mercil mercilessly killed an innocent person, Gestal, but you helped me figure out where I am, so I'd say your karma's about even on that one. No personal bias there at all, really. Alright, blindfold off, and here's the point where I kind of, music starts up and freedom from the magic tech facility. <laughs> no. Knowledge is boring, knowledge is not power, knowledge is boring and I don't want to hear it. Alright, B button. End of that segment. I'm out of the Magitech facility. See you next time.